to ABC News. 77 WABC. Here's Dr. Gil Liederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo surgery or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, first in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate, all custom-tailored for you. Call 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES. Welcome, everybody. It's the Radio Surgery Show with Dr. Gil Lederman, M.D., New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board-certified radiation oncologist who brings you the latest cancer treatment news, interviewing world-renowned cancer experts, delving to special cases, and, of course, answering your questions. I'm Rob Redstone, broadcasting from the WABC studios in the heart of New York City. And now, please welcome... Dr. Lederman. Hi, good morning. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning, you? Doctor. How are you? I'm here with John Taransky, and we have uh, Russ in the control. We're uh, having a live show, like always, and you're welcome to call us at 800-848-9222. 800-848-9222. My name is Dr. Gil Lederman. I'm a uh, board-certified cancer doctor, radiation oncologist, and medical oncologist. I work at Radio Surgery New York, which is our private office at 38th and Broadway. So we're very centrally located in Manhattan. We're by all the trains, subways, buses, Penn Station, Port Authority, Grand Central, Path, Times Square, Herald Square. We make it easy to get yeah, to us. Yeah, you have a great location that's uh, yeah, very convenient it, to get to, for sure. I think it's the easiest location. Yeah. So we have people from around the world. This week we had... Uh, People fly in from Italy. We had a family fly in from uh, Texas, from the world's largest cancer institute. Wow. And people come for a reason. And the reason is our quality of care and our devotion to hitting the cancer and trying to avoid harm to healthy tissues. Sure, sure. So I have a lot of stories, uh, real live stories from this week, not ancient history, live this week stories about our patients. And I think we can learn a lot from each one of these uh, patients we're going to talk about today. There's also a lot of cancer news. Believe it or not, in this holiday period, there's a lot of cancer news. We're going to talk about that. We're talking about uh, how to save lives, possibly tens of thousands of lives. Uh, our own office is a private center for treatment of cancer, so you don't have to walk around in uh, miles and miles of uh, corridors and not knowing where you're going or who you're going to see or who's going to take care of you, if it's a student or a resident or intern here. The chief takes care of the patient. And everyone knows who you are. So the big beauty is it's private center, and you're welcome to come. We take most insurances, Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, you can just call us. Our office number is 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES, which is 212-246-4237. And you're welcome to uh, contact us. I'm going to be talking about our booklets during the week, and you're welcome to call us. We'll send out the booklet and the DVD at no charge to you. So... With that being said, in our introduction, I'd like to talk about some cases, some real right, cases. Good, good. Uh, the first one we talked about, Linda's mother. So we don't talk about patients' names because that's private. Sure. But, uh, Linda's mother tells us who it is, and I've spoken about Linda's mother before. I certainly remember. This is a woman who uh, is about 80. She has a lymphoma. She had a lymphoma in the chest, and she got chemo, 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 chemo. And I thought there was a better strategy. Yep. But... The family wanted to stick with their doctors, and they used chemo, 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 chemo. Well, endless chemo has side effects, mainly because it goes into the bloodstream and goes from head to toe. It's mm -hmm. not directed therapy. Right. So chemo is a kind of toxin or poison, and, of course, it's supposed to work more on the cancer than the rest of the body, but often it hurts the bone marrow and hurts the nerves and 
Many people have low blood counts, as you probably could imagine. So and, areas that uh, aren't affected b- uh, by the cancer are also being hit. Right. When you put the chemo into the vein, it goes from head to toe. Right, right. So a lot of people get uh, neuropathy, which means numbness of their fingers and toes, sometimes sure. decreased hearing. A lot of people have lowering of their blood counts. Sometimes they get so much chemo that their blood counts never return to normal. Wow. And that's happened to this woman. The bone marrow produces blood cells, red blood cells, which carry oxygen, white blood cells, which fight, fight infection, and platelets, which stop bleeding. And after endless chemo, you can have an interference with the production of those cells. You sure. can imagine that. Sure. It's like if a factory gets bombed by the Nazis every day, it's not going to work right. Exactly. Yeah. And sure. that's basically what the chemo is doing. It's getting bombed by the chemo. Right. And after a while, it takes a toll. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a secret. There's peripheral collateral damage. What we try to do is to hit the cancer. So we find the cancer in the body. We were the first ones in America to do stereotactic extracranial radiosurgery, which means outside of the head we can, and in the head, we can focus in and hit the cancer without hurting the healthy tissues. And because we focus in the treatment, we can usually increase the dose. When you increase the dose, it has a greater biologic effect on killing the cancer. So the rate of killing the cancer is very, very high. Yeah. And usually that killing of the cancer, where we aim the beam, is permanent for the mm-hmm. life of the patient. So this woman, Linda's mother, uh, had a spread of her lymphoma to the brain last year. And, of course, the guys that gave her chemo, 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 chemosabi, you can imagine what they wanted to do when it spread to the brain. More chemo. Chemo, chemo, chemo. So she got chemo, chemo, chemo. She got Temidar and Taxol and uh, uh, multiple other agents, and none of them worked. In fact, all the tests kept showing she was getting worse and worse and worse. Now, usually when someone's getting worse and worse and worse, you stop that treatment. Right? Right. Try a new approach. Try something new. Yeah, well, sure. she's getting worse and worse and worse and worse, and they're keeping on more chemo, chemo, chemo. What's well, telling you it's not getting in the brain, it's not killing the cancer. The cancer is growing, and she's getting worse. About uh, six weeks ago, she stopped speaking. Okay. Completely stopped speaking. So, grandma stopped speaking, and grandma stopped using the right side of her body. Okay. Well, grandma had a big tumor in the left side of the brain that was growing, mm. and putting pressure on the brain, uh, moving the whole brain over to the other side because the brain is locked in the skull. The brain has nowhere to go. Right. It's not like when you have a tumor, let's say, in your hand or something, it can you can make a big bump. Right. In Grow the brain, out. Yeah. In the brain, it's confined by the skull. The skull's like a prison. Sure. Now, usually it's protective, but in this case, the protection of the skull is harmful because... Yeah. The brain is swelling up. The brain has nowhere to go. So the tumor is actually putting more and more pressure on the brain and destroying the brain. So three weeks ago on a Friday afternoon, Linda was told that her mother was probably going to die over the weekend. And obviously she loves her mother and was hysterical about it. She called me up and I said, Linda, I've been telling you for months, your mother needs fractionated stereotactic brain radio surgery with us. We've done thousands of cases. We've done about 20,000 cases. Yep. We're good at it. We're mm-hmm. devoted to it. This is what we do every day, day in and day out. And Linda said, when can I come? I said, you can come immediately. And she came immediately and uh, got the first treatment. And within hours, she was more alert. Yeah. Wow. And by the second treatment, she was speaking Okay, she hadn't spoken for a month. Yeah, right, right. She hadn't spoken wow. for a month. And this was after one two or two treatments. visits? Two treatments. Two treatments. Mm-hmm. Each treatment's about 15 minutes. People come in, get a treatment. We focus the beam on the cancer. It takes about 15 minutes. They get up and usually you know, go home, Out go to door. work, go yep. to lunch, yep. go shopping. Um, well, this woman got up and started to speak. Yeah, wow. And last week... She got a new scan of her head. Now, okay. I t- told Linda, you know, <clears throat> this tumor is going to shrink. She said, Can you promise me? Well, I can't promise anybody. I don't. Sure. I can. I wish I could promise, but once this doctor start promising something, it means that 
they're probably not being honest because yeah. we can never exactly predict the human body. Of course. But I said, Linda, most likely it's going to get smaller. Well, she got a scan this week. Okay. And? It got smaller? And it got smaller. Wow. So before, the whole brain was pushed over to the other side. It was called midline shift. Before, there was this huge edema or swelling of the brain. Mm -hmm. It's going away. The actual size of the cancer has shrunken in the brain with two treatments only. Yeah. And, of course, Linda's so happy and her family's happy that, you know, Grandma can speak. Yeah, of course. Non-invasively. Remember, three weeks ago, she was told she's going to die that weekend. Right. So it tells you the power of a second opinion. You can come in and get a fresh second opinion. You don't need the same treatment all the time. Well, not every patient needs chemo, chemo, chemo. There comes to be a point if the treatment's not working, the patient's getting worse, if the pain is worse, give us a call. Call. What do you have to lose? No, nothing at all. What and I know that you're, uh, you're, you're, you'll are you're make yourself available uh, based on patients' needs. We're very available. Yep, we yep. promise to see some any patient within 24 business hours. We have something called the Urgent Cancer Consultants at 212 Choices. So you call us up, and we promise you we'll see you within one business day. So you don't need to take endless, useless, failed treatment. Yeah. If the treatment's failing, give us a call. Even if it's not, if you want a second opinion, come in for cancer treatment. It may be worth your life. It may change your life. So it certainly changed Linda's mother's life and uh, Yeah, that's family. a great story, doctor. Well, and it's a true story. Yeah. Uh, the beautiful thing, it's true. I have a nice little news article, and I want to talk about that. Does walking decrease the risk of breast cancer? I would think not. You'd think not. I would think Take not. a little walk every yeah. day. I mean, you I, think walking good and, for the heart, yes. Good for the health, yes. Cancer, I'm okay. not too sure. Okay, well, there's a new study out, and uh, I want to talk about this week, that shows physical therapy, even walking can reduce a woman's risk of developing breast cancer. And it seems it does it by changing how her body deals with estrogens. Now, there's been evidence for some time that exercise reduces many types of cancer, including breast cancers. Uh, one study was published in a journal called Cancer Epidemiology, Biomarkers, and Prevention, so a long title. And he looked at data maintained by the American Cancer Society of more than 73,000 postmenopausal women. So the data outlined health and medical information from these 73,000 women aged 50 to 73 who enrolled in the study in the 90s. So for two decades, they completed a questionnaire every two years, and it was a pretty thorough questionnaire. And they asked for detailed information about how the women spent their leisure time and whether they exercised. Now, 9% of women never exercised, never. A few said they exercised vigorously and often, such as running, swimming, or playing singles tennis. But most walked, usually at a pleasant pace of about three miles an, an hour, so that'd be about one mile every 20 minutes. Sure. And half of the group said that such strolling was their only form of exercise. Now, over the course of the study of 73,000 women, 4,700, 4,700 developed breast cancer. So then you can look at who got breast cancer versus who exercised, right? right? And so they cross-tabulated exercise and the medical records, and they found that the women who walked at least seven hours per week, so that's an hour a day, had a 14% less chance of having breast cancer than those who walked for less than three hours per week. And that was statistically significant. Yeah, sure. So one hour a day will decrease your risk of breast cancer by 14%. And the women who were most active, sweating vigorously up to 10 hours per week, had even a greater benefit with a 25% less risk of developing breast cancer than those women who uh, exercised the least. And now, how does this work? Well, there was another study that looked at younger women, and the younger women had their estrogens analyzed. Now, there's different kinds of estrogens. Mm -hmm. And as women exercised, 
uh, up to 